Hello and welcome to In the Spotlight. I'm your host, Rachel Topper. We are in the midst of the holiday season and during this time, it is important to give to those who are less fortunate. There are a lot of ways to give back, such as giving to the Goodwill, donating to Toys for Tots, or even just helping out of the soup kitchen. But here at Hoover, we have some students that are doing a little something extra. Featured on the show today are three Hoover students who have organized or are part of some special service projects during the holidays. Not only are they school-wide projects, but there are also projects that community members can participate in too. Let's get started. I'm here with Hoover student Anthony Massa, who has organized a musical concert for charity. He is here to give us some more information. Thank you so much for joining me today, Anthony. Thanks for having me. This is great. I'm really excited to talk about this event because it combines mm -hmm. two great things. Music, something that everybody loves, right. and giving back to the community, which is something, like I said earlier, very important during this time of year. Right, right. So before we get into all the great things that you've planned and mm -hmm. the show in its entirety, can you tell me about how you started and got the idea for this event? Well, it's something, hosting an event is something that I've always really wanted to do. And when I was in like seventh and eighth grade, I would sneak downstairs and watch Jimmy Fallon and I would always want to be like him and host a show. And so then last year I took Mrs. Mannion's speech and performance class. And then I thought to myself, I really have the tools to make it happen. And then that was really in June and I never planned for it to be a Christmas event or even a charity okay. event. And then, so that was in June, so I thought by the time I could get it done, it would be around December. And so that's where it kind of formed into what it is now. Well, not only is it an event that you've planned for charity, but also you get to implement your passion mm -hmm. for what you said watching Jimmy Kimmel Live and all of yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think it's a great event so far and what you've done for it. Well, thank you. Um, how did you get the venue and kind of organize it after you figured out your idea? Well, the venue for me was really a no-brainer. It was because I've grown up at St. Paul's. I went to school there through eighth grade. I go to church there. I, I do everything at St. Paul's. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first stage that I got up to speak in front of anybody. So for me, that was the only stage that I could ever picture myself doing something like that. So it was really a no-brainer for me and then plus it has so many uh, benefits like I don't have a credibility issue where I might with other mm -hmm. venues because everybody there knows me and I don't have to pay for the venue so it's it's a really nice well venue. and also provides you a basis of comfort too exactly, I mean this exactly. is your first event it's always nice having that comfort zone where you know this is going to work out and this yeah, is all exactly. going to be okay so this is a musical concert and obviously there's going to be musical acts there would you like to right, tell right, me right. some of the genres of music you're going to have yeah we really have everything which makes me so excited and we have everything from hard rock to opera and that's what really appeals to all audiences and it really brings all kinds of people into the event Definitely. because we're going to have acts that uh, are going to make you want to get up out of your seat in one moment and then in the next performance we're going to have acts that have you frozen to your seat with chills. So Well, and that pro that's great marketing because it's uh -huh. going to draw in a huge crowd of people. You're going to have the younger kids that like the rap and the hard right. rock right, and then right, the right, older right. folk that are more classical and right, opera. Right, exactly. So that's a great component to your show. Mm -hmm. What specific groups are you going to have? Uh, we're going to have uh, Vinyl Dynamite, which is a group of Hoover alumni and graduated a couple years ago. We're going to have a lot of Hoover alumni, actually. We're going to have uh, Jordan Bednar, um, Tyler Horn's coming on. We're going to have um, PJ Chavez from Walsh University, Cinnamon Toast Sass, who is a uh, adult band, and we're going to have uh, even some choirs, uh, some local choirs come on. And then, most importantly, we have um, Mayor David Held and uh, Nate Shreve doing some comedy. So it's going to be really all around a big variety and a lot of local people. So It sounds like you have already a huge community involvement, which I feel like, once again, that's going to be a great component to the show, mm -hmm. just because you're also helping them out a little bit, giving them the opportunity to perform and show off their skills for a great cause as right. well. So after everybody watches the show and they're really interested in coming after hearing who's there and what's going to happen, how do they get tickets? All right, well, there's three ways to get tickets. And probably the easiest way would be to go online to www.eventbrite.com okay. and search my event, The Season of the Heart, and you can just buy tickets right online there, print out your ticket, and bring it to the door. Um, the other ways would be to go to St. Paul's to at the parish office. They have tickets on sale every day. 
or the final way would be to uh, just show up at the door, except the only problem with that would be you would really have no say in where you sat. Okay. Um, is there any certain prices for tickets? So if you mm -hmm. want to sit maybe closer to the front, is that more? Right, right, right. We have two forms of tickets. We have table seats and bleacher seats, and the table seats are obviously on the floor, and we have for those $8 for adults and $5 for children. Okay. And then if you want to sit on the bleachers, it's a little less. It's $5 for adults and $3 for children. Okay. All right, and with tickets obviously also comes advertising as right, well. Right. How are you advertising this? Well, we've been advertising quite a bit actually. We've uh, appeared in the Viking Views, the Repository, the North Neighbor Lots News. Lots of places. Yeah, so, that, so that's great. It's really a lot of pos positive advertisement for us. And then we've also been promoting the event a lot uh, in the St. Paul's community at church. And then uh, also Mayor David Held has done a lot in the North Can community to make it just a more of a whole community encompassing event. So. Well, I'm sure with basically how you're having all the different groups and it's for charity, I'm sure you've already had a ton of ticket sales and a lot mm -hmm. more will be increasing. So you've done the advertising, you've sold some tickets, what's next? How do you feel the show is gonna pan out? I'm really excited to see the response that we get for the show. And next week we're gonna start having rehearsals, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna get to see really how the whole show is gonna come together and get a better idea for that. And then we're, and then for the show, I really think and really hope that we're going to get a great reception, and hopefully it'll just bring, make people excited and make this an event that keeps going every single year. All right, so. and if you see a positive outcome, will you continue the event every year? Oh, absolutely, yes. I, I definitely want to. I want to make it bigger and better every year because this year we're starting small and we're getting a lot of real local acts and we're getting a lot of donations to help fund the show. And next year, I want to be able to make it bigger and better, perhaps go to a bigger venue, get some bigger acts together and, that, and make it even outside the North Kin community, maybe even the Stark County community. Wow, so. that's a fantastic goal. And one final question mm -hmm. here, real quick. What charities are your funds going to? Yeah, the charity, we're actually going to split up all the proceeds. Half of them are going to uh, Hammer Nails, which is a organization here in Stark County that helps a lot of struggling homeowners. And w then the rest is going to the Stark County Hunger Task Force. Okay. And so the reason we did that with two charities is because the Stark County Hunger Task Force, that's an immediate effect. These people are going to get this food by Christmas. Right. And then right. as far as hammer and nails, it's the middle of winter. We're not going to be able to do a lot as far as constructing houses or fixing homes or things like that. So that's more of a long-term effect. Yes. And that is, you know, I never really thought of it that way when you said those two. It's fantastic mm -hmm. that you're not only focusing on the holiday season, but you're also focusing in the spring and the summer, right, right. the hammers and nails. I just think it's fantastic. And Thank I am you. very excited to see, see how your show pans out. Thank you. And I wish you luck, even though you probably won't need it. <laughs> it sounds like you have things pretty well in hand. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you for coming on with me thank today. Thank you for having me. This is so great. No problem. Now, here is Hoover student Michael Hoskinson, who is a member of Fellowship of Christian Students. Every year, this group organizes Operation Christmas Child, and he is here to tell us all about it. Thank you for joining me today. No problem, Rachel. Thanks for having me. No problem. So Operation Christmas Child, it's something we do here every year at Hoover, especially mm -hmm. around the holiday season, yes. hence the name, Operation Christmas Child. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about how the event or project came to Hoover? Well, originally, um, Operation Christmas Child started in 1990 over in Wales, this couple decided that they wanted to do something for uh, Romanian orphanages. And so they uh, got nine trucks of supplies together, uh, Christmas gifts for kids, medical supplies, food, and they sent it over to Romania. And then in 1993, the Samaritan's Purse, which runs Operation Christmas Child now, they adopted it. And since then, 61 million boxes have been traveled over across 135 countries. And uh, here at Hoover, we're able to be a part in that and um, send boxes over to kids in need. Wow, that's fantastic. Just, you know, the whole idea of sending kids boxes to kids in need because Christmas mm -hmm. morning, you know, can be hard for a lot of people this time of year. And the fact that an organization's focused solely on making that day a little brighter for Definitely. those that don't have the opportunities that we do is fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
So, how did us here at Hoover hear about this? Um, here at Hoover, um, as far as I know, for a while, uh, Mr. Kreis, who is the FCS advisor, he uh, originally brought the idea over here to Hoover that uh, we at Hoover, uh, we should uh, pack these boxes for kids because, uh, you know, we have so many things that other people don't. And this right. is just a way to show God's love to these people. Which is fantastic as mm -hmm. well. And you mentioned that you packed boxes for people. Can you tell me a little bit more about the premise of this whole project and service opportunity? Yeah, so um, in these boxes we put all these fun toys and uh, hygiene items and it's just really a way to show uh, the love of God to these people who don't have anything, who need health stuff, t who can't, don't have toothbrush and toothpaste to brush their teeth, yeah. who want to have fun on Christmas, and but they can't get it any other way. And I feel like that's fantastic that you, you know, a lot of people think around Christmas about the material things mm -hmm. like the iPad or the MacBook, or, yeah. but a lot of people don't think about the, what we take for granted, like being able to wake up and brush your teeth in the morning, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people in the world that aren't able to do that. Yeah. And the fact that you, this organization incorporates both into one thing is fantastic because I'm mm -hmm. sure that those kids are just as excited for getting the toothbrush as they are for getting the toys. Oh, yeah. Definitely. definitely. So what other items can you put in the boxes? Um, usually in boxes, the Samaritan Spurs, they have a whole guideline sheet on what to put on it. Um, usually here at school, we pack toys, so yo-yos, dolls. Um, so smaller types of toys. Smaller types of toys that would be able to fit in a box. Okay. We also pack non-health hygiene stuff non-liquid hygiene stuff. Okay. So deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, bar soap, washcloth. The um, necessities. Yes, yes, exactly. And then we throw in some candy in there, hard candy. It can't be chocolate because yeah, it could melt. melt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you just can't put anything war related, like so little mini army figurines. You can't have those. Understandable. Fake guns and stuff like that. So we do this here at the high school. How do you collect these items? Um, starting about October, we start um, Operation Christmas Trout at FCS, uh, and, and we accept donations for the shoe boxes to put the stuff in, the wrapping paper, and also the stuff to put the, into the boxes. Um, so after that, we wrap the boxes, and we pack them, and we uh, drop them off at a local drop-off center. Perfect. And you mentioned you have the boxes that you put the stuff in and the wrapping paper. What kind of boxes can you use for this? Um, here at Hoover, we use uh, shoe boxes that people donate. So if you get your new pair of Nike swishes and <laughs> you're not using the shoe box, feel free to donate it. Perfect opportunity. <laughs> exactly. But uh, Samaritan's Purse, they also sell 100 uh, pre-designed boxes, kind of that you have to put together yourself for like $21 if you didn't want to wrap a box. Okay, and we have it, an opportunity for the students here to participate, but how about if the community members are watching this show and they think it's awesome and they want mm -hmm. to participate too, yeah. how do they do that? Well, community members can either donate stuff to the school so we can do all the hard work for them, or they can um, do the boxes themselves Okay. and um, donate them to a local drop-off center to uh, give to the children around the world. So once people have donated their boxes and they take them to the drop-off center, do you ever hear back from who got your boxes or is it just kind of knowing that it went to somebody that needs it? Um, in the boxes, I forgot to mention, you can also put a note or okay. like a picture of yourself. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, and maybe like a pre... Um, written out envelope so okay. that they can send a note back to you mm -hmm. um, and then you can hear back from them that way or um, you have to there's a shipping price for the boxes that we like to get donated to okay um, and if you do that online and print out your label from there to put on your box you can actually see where your box went to what country and stuff oh, like wow. that so it's really cool that's really nice because then you know not that you shouldn't donate to charity without any you know, knowing that it went to somebody, mm -hmm. but it just gives you that nice security knowing that somebody got it and it's yes. it made somebody's day, yeah. you know, where it went. And what countries, do you, do you know what countries that these go to or is it just anywhere in the There's world? There's over like 135 countries. Wow. So I think uh, most of them are third world countries. Okay, but, um, makes sense. Yeah. One final question for you. So once everything's done, you drop it off and you've done the boxes here. Mm -hmm. How have you seen the turnout for this here in the student body at the high school? Um, this year we've had over 50 boxes from the high school itself made, and I feel like um, the in FCS we just um, are really um, 
happy to see that something we could do here at the high school in North Canton can affect people across the world and just uh, share the good news of Christ. Right, cause, because we live in a small little Ohio and mm -hmm. small little North Canton, and we don't really get to be exposed to a lot of the third world countries and what yeah. they're going through. So any way that people can help them and, you know, and it's very simple. Like you said, you mm -hmm. just fill a box with stuff. A lot of people yeah. have hygiene stuff at home or little toys from Happy Meals even or just mm -hmm. anything from the dollar store. Those work great. Right. And it's just an easy way to donate and an easy way to help out a lot of different people during mm -hmm. the season. Um, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. You did a great job explaining the whole premise of Operation Christmas Child, and I'm sure a lot more donations will be made after this show. Thank so you. thank you so much. I'm sure they will. Last but certainly not least, we have our last guest, Kathleen Deshin. Kathleen is a part of MedTech, and every year this group organizes a holiday fundraiser called the Christmas Change Challenge. She is here to give us a scoop. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. No problem. Like Operation Christmas Child, the Christmas Change Challenge is something we do here every year at the high school. It's something that everybody kind of knows about, everybody is always looking forward to at the beginning of December. How did this idea originate for you down in MedTech? Well, it originally started because as the med tech program, since it's a career tech program, we have to have some kind of organization to go with it. Okay. And as an organization, we're supposed to have some kind of charity along with it. And okay. we decided to sponsor people that are in our community. And we just really wanted to give back to our community since a lot of our materials and stuff come from donations and everything like that that we use in class. Well, it's always nice to give back, not only during the holidays, but especially when you've been lucky enough to get donations from the community and people have been so gracious to help out. It's really nice to hear that there's groups that are willing to say, thank you for helping me out. I'm going to give back to you as well. Where did this idea originate? Was this just kind of made up among the group or did this come from an outside source? Well, I know for me in my class, then we ended up adapting it like from, we ended up taking it from other past years okay. and just kind of as a club in general we decided to just keep it going because we feel it's a really important charity that we really like to do and it is important it yes, really is very important and you know like I was thinking you it's donating change correct the mm -hmm. students here donate change and change mm -hmm. is something so simplistic when you think about it you have it in your car cup holder or mm -hmm. in your pocket somewhere and just every little bit helps and I think it's just an easy way to get a lot of donations and make it accessible for everybody mm -hmm. now with that what kind of planning goes into organizing this kind of a fundraiser well this year being the president of the club I really had to help out a lot because we just got a new teacher her name is Mrs. Allen okay. and we were the ones that were basically all in charge of it and it was kind of a really nice feeling to just have the whole thing under wraps and mm -hmm. we really got to help her out and help her organize the whole thing and um, we got the other two classes MedTech 1 and 2 okay. to be involved with it also like MedTech 1 got to do a bunch of the decorating and make posters for it and then MedTech 2 got to actually collect the change and then MedTech 3 counted it up and put it all together Perfect. And when did you start collecting money for this? Um, we do it during Spirit Week because, you know, we figured you're all pumped up for everything. Right. And, you know, it's just a lot of easy little change can accumulate from buying any of your costumes or anything like that. That so. is such a great idea. I've never actually thought of that that way. You know, you, we always go all out here too for Spirit Week. And, you know, if we can spend 50 bucks on a costume, you know, obviously you could donate 10 cents to a great organization like exactly. that. Exactly. And once you've collected all the money, and that is by students here at Hoover, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about the students and how they donate here? Um, what we do is we send a baggie around to each third period, period class, and okay. we collect it at the beginning of the period. Like, the teacher will send it around, and they'll put in whatever they have. And then we'll send the MedTech 2 kids around, and they will come around towards the middle of the period, mm -hmm. half of the period, you know, somewhere around there. And they will collect the bags and bring it back to the room, and they'll start uh, separating the change. That okay. way we could get into piles and count it a little more easily. Right, definitely. Have you seen, has this been a popular thing for students? Have you seen a great outcome from it this year? Um, we actually ended up raising about $910. Wow. 
It's yeah, fantastic. which is really good, and we ended up putting it to a lot of good uses. Perfect. What are those uses? Speaking we of that. ended up sponsoring two families, okay. and one was a family of two, and then one was a family of eleven. So we had oh. thirteen people overall. Wow. And it ranged from all ages to just a little baby to older. People. <laughs> did you just buy, did you have like a list of, I know some people who do something similar, they have like a list of what people like. Did you have that or did you just kind of buy the necessities? Um, we ended up asking the guidance office to help us out choosing families and we ended up getting like their sizes and like what they like in general. Mm -hmm. Like I know one person liked Harley Davidson stuff oh, because he was the daddy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we ended up trying to stick around that and try to get him what he really wanted to just make his Christmas a little more special. Right, right. And it's just, like I said, fantastic that even med tech, a career tech class is even giving back to the community in such a great way because Christmas morning just is probably so much better just with that small help from, or even a large help, I guess, from the school and from you guys as well. How, so if everybody watches the show and they want to kind of do something similar, how can they do that out in the community? Well, we actually ended up having a lot left over from after sponsoring those two families. And we ended up taking that extra money and taking it and getting games and books. And we're going to give it to the Alliance Home for Children and Families. Aww. And we'll be uh, delivering that next Wednesday. Um, Actually, a lot of teachers that didn't have third period classes were like, well, I want to help out. How can I help out? Wow. So we'll just end up taking their money and, you know, like, it won't go towards anything like the donut party or pizza party, like what the other classes can yeah. get. Yeah. But it's just a really nice idea that they want to help even though they're getting nothing out of it. Right. And that's what's so important because mm -hmm. people should donate to charity without getting anything out exactly. of it. I mean, that's the whole point of it, donating and volunteering your time. And I think that's, like I said, fantastic with that. And one final question for you here. So, you know, we've done this for lots of years. How do you see this continuing out for the next few years? Um, I really hope that my younger kids, uh, the, my younger officers, I yeah. should say, <laughs> um, they really continue it and that they really keep it going and make it better because I know it's not perfect right now, but I just really hope that they improve it as it goes along. I'm sure they will. It's such a great cause and such a simple way to donate and help the community during this time of year. I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. You did a great job explaining the Change Challenge and just giving us a full view of what it's like. Thank you. So thank you so much. <laughs> that wraps up today's show. During the holiday season, it's important to give to those who are the less fortunate. I hope this show is giving you some ideas and opportunities to do that. Happy holidays, and I'll see you in 2015.